Hey everybody. My guest today is Dr. Wesley Zandberg from the University of British Columbia, Okanagan campus. Wes completed his PhD and postdoctoral studies at Simon Fraser University, where he worked on projects that aimed at developing inhibitors for the enzymes that break down complex carbohydrates. This research introduced him to the challenges associated with the analysis of the surprisingly complex range of carbohydrates found in nature. And now students in the Zandberg lab are focused on developing improved glycoanalytical methods. Hey Wes, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. Yeah, good. Uh, so we're here to talk about sugars, um, complex sugars in particular, and just they, they are inherently complex. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, human milk oligosaccharides or HMOs, just uh, sort of 10,000 foot level, what they are and, and why we should all care about them in our diet? So, so milk, uh, whether it's, it's human milk or, or cow milk or from any other mammal, um, contains a very uh, rich source of carbohydrate, actually. The, the major carbohydrate we find in milk is a sugar that I think most people will be familiar with. It's it's the sugar lactose. And lactose is a sugar or carbohydrate. I, I use those two terms um, somewhat synonymously. Usually sugar is a carbohydrate that tastes sweet. We, we, we use it to refer to sweeteners, but they're, they're quite similar. And lactose itself, the main sugar found in milk, the main carbohydrate is itself composed of two even simpler sugars, glucose and galactose, that are chemically linked together uh, by a single chemical bond. And that major milk sugar, lactose, can be broken down by all newborns and some adults, provided they have the enzyme lactase in their small intestine that can first break apart the glucose and galactose into simpler pieces that can then serve as a calorie source for baby or somebody who drinks a glass of milk. If we take lactose and then start stitching on other simple sugars to make, instead of a disaccharide lactose, we add one more sugar, now we have a trisaccharide. There's three simple sugars all chemically linked together. And, and we can keep adding simple sugars on to make larger and larger oligomers, I guess you could call them, and these are what we call milk oligosaccharides. And if there happen to be in human milk, we call them human milk oligosaccharides. Um, and these, uh, what, I, what I should mention is that these milk oligosaccharides are found in all species of mammals. Um, so the cow milk dairy products that we, we drink, but their most richest, the, the richest source of oligosaccharides we find in any milk of any mammal happen to be in humans. So the concentration of HMOs, the concentration of oligosaccharides in human milk that are basically modified lactoses, uh, is about 10 times higher than the concentration of similar molecules that we'd find in cow milk. And um, the very interesting thing about these molecules is we, whether adults or human babies, are completely unable to break them down ourselves. We cannot digest them. Um, we instead rely on the microorganisms living in our large intestine and colon to, to break those oligosaccharides down into simple carbohydrates, which can then be either absorbed into the infant or more likely actually metabolized by the bacteria in baby's gut. Oh, that was an excellent uh, explanation, Wes. You, you must be a professor of this because even I could understand that. Um, so I, I do want to follow on a little bit deeper though. Um, so you say that we can't inherently uh, process these milk oligosaccharides, but it's my understanding that they can have a prebiotic function in, in newborns. I don't know what adults, but it's certainly in newborns. So how does, how does that play into this, this broader scope of the importance of these, these, these compounds? People have come up with about, with three, three at least major functions for this class of molecule. Um, the first function is, as you just mentioned, they're prebiotics. They're bacteria food, basically. We can't break them down, uh, and they 
reach the large intestine and the colon primarily where they select for a certain kind of bacterial growth. Remember, a newborn, its, its body's surfaces, including the digestive tract, as soon as that baby is born, begin to be colonized by microorganisms. And its immune system is really quite, um, well, it's never experienced those microorganisms since before it was born, uh, since uh, birth, uh, until it was born, I should say. And so its body needs to be trained to recognize beneficial bacteria, the beneficial bacteria um, we would like to somehow select for the growth of those rather than disease causing bacteria. And, and so there's a group of bacteria, primarily uh, initially in newborns, bifidobacteria and, and some other ones um, actually contain the enzymes necessary to break apart these complex HMOs, human milk oligosaccharides, first into their sm smaller carbohydrate subunits, and then under the anaerobic conditions of the large intestine and the colon, they ferment those simpler carbohydrates, usually to produce things like short chain fatty acids. Second main function of these milk oligosaccharides requires us to actually um, understand at a, at, I guess at a chemical, at a biochemical level, what the lining of the gut looks like. Imagine, I guess, uh, sh you know, sh shrinking yourself down so that you're the size of a, uh, of a bacteria and then you're looking at the lining of the gut, what, what your environment is. And what we see in the lining of the large, large intestine and especially the colon is we see a whole lot of mucus protecting that single layer of cells that keeps about a trillion microorganisms away from your immune system. If those two things get together, your immune system and the microbes living in your, in your gut, they, they, they sort of meet that you have some serious issues. And interestingly, pathogenic bacteria, pathogenic viruses, even sometimes some toxins, like for instance, the cholera toxin, they actually are capable of recognizing and adhering to these complex carbohydrates lining uh, that, that make up the mucus lining the gut. And when they stick to that mucus, that's the first step that is required to really initiate an infection of the host, in this case, uh, a newborn baby. And so because milk oligosaccharides chemically resemble the mucus lining the gut, the second major function these molecules have is by preventing pathogenic species, virus and bacteria mostly, from adhering to the gut lining and establishing an infection. And the third major thing that these molecules do that we're just sort of getting a handle on now is some milk oligosaccharides may actually be absorbed through the lining of the gut into the bloodstream of baby where they are then transported throughout the body uh, and it is very clear that some of these are directly interacting with the immune cells and we usually think that that dampens inflammation um, which is which is often a good thing right with our the, the baby the neonatal diet is effectively starting to train the immune system. 